States Constitution, which proclaims in Article 1, Section 8-5, only Congress has the authority to, quote, coin money and set the value thereof. And in Article 1, Section 10, the states are denied the right to make, quote, anything but gold or silver as legal tender to pay debts. So because Congress denied the right to pay a debt from now on, there could be no requirement to pay any debt, and what therefore began to be practiced is the set-off of debt. Set-off is where the bookkeeping shows the balance is zero, but the debt's not paid. It's like it would be forgiven. The real issue is money, and what money is. Can anyone define what money is? Apparently, it is whatever we agree it to be. It is a medium of exchange. In the past, it has been seashells, cow dung, wooden sticks, pieces of paper with ink on them, like we have now, cigarettes, and probably many other items. In 1864, the National Banking Act was passed, and it stated that any bank could loan money based on the deposit of a promise to pay. Or in other words, the deposit of a promise to pay or a promissory note. In 1913, the Federal Reserve Act allowed a private group of mostly European bankers to issue an elastic form of money called Federal Reserve Notes. A Federal Reserve Note is a promissory note or a promise to pay, because that's what a note is. However, it would only be payment if you went to the bank and demanded gold or silver in exchange for the note. The government borrowed enough money from the Fed, who created it from thin air, to go bankrupt in 1933. Or just before its 20-year charter would run out, and after which the Congress could not rescind the act. So the Federal Reserve loans money to the federal government, and it is not backed by gold or silver, and they create it from thin air, and the federal government is re required to pay interest on the money they borrow, which caused them to go bankrupt. The federal government now was a debtor in bankruptcy to a privately owned bank who issued worthless paper with ink on it in exchange for gold, and in stepped Roosevelt, who had to save the bankers and reconstruct the country. The people had found out that their money was worth $35 for an ounce of gold in Europe, while the Federal Reserve's value was only $20 an ounce. So their value of their money had increased. This then led to a run on the banks as people tried to get their money out in the form of gold. The value of the American dollar had risen and people wanted their money. The banks didn't have any gold to give out as they had flooded the market with worthless paper notes and had shipped off countless tons of gold to Europe. The Federal Reserve notes were a contract that stated they could be exchanged for gold because right on the Federal Reserve note it stated can, you can redeem this for gold at any Federal Reserve Bank. So that's a contract. The bankers would have all gone to jail or maybe have been hung by the crowds except that Roosevelt stepped in with troops to stop the people and save the bankers. Sound familiar? Under an addendum to the 1917 Trading with the Enemies Act, Roosevelt amends it in 1933 to state, quote, during time of war or during any other period of national emergency declared by the president, the president may, through any agency that he may designate or otherwise investigate, regulate or prohibit under such rules and regulations as he may prescribe by means of licensure or otherwise, any transaction in foreign exchange, transactions of credit between or payments by banking institutions as defined by the president, and export, hoarding, melting, or earmarking of gold or silver coin or bullion or currency by any person within the United States or any place subject to the jurisdiction thereof. Title I, Section 2, 48, Statute 1, March 9, 1933. Now that Roosevelt had created a bank holiday in order to save the bankers, he had to ban the hoarding of gold and be able to borrow money in order to run the government. But from who? 
and with what collateral. I mean, the bank won't loan you money unless you have something of value that they can take. This is noted in Black's Law where it states, quote, Bank holiday of, holiday of 1933, Presidential Proclamations number 2039 issued March 6, 1933, and number 2040 issued March 9, 1933. Normal banking functions were resumed on March 13th, subject to certain restrictions. The first proclamation it was held had no authority in law until the passage on March 9, 1933 of a ratified act, 12 U.S.C.A. 95B. The present law forbids member banks of the Federal Reserve System to transact banking business except under regulations of the Secretary of the Treasury during an emergency proclaimed by the President, 12 U.S.C.A. 95. Quote, there has always been a national emergency as shown in the Senate Report 93549 from 1973. That's when they filed the Senate Report. Suspending our Constitution, quote, Since March 1933, the United States has been in a state of declared national emergency. In fact, there are now in effect four presidentially proclaimed states of national emergency. In addition to the national emergency declared by President Roosevelt in 1933, there are also the national emergency proclaimed by President Truman on December 16, 1950. During the Korean conflict and the states of national emergency declared by President Nixon on March 23, 1970 and August 15, 1971, quote. Roosevelt would then institute Social Security a communist plan where one man supports another without his consent. The people would become human resources and the bankers would loan on the value of each man's labor throughout his life as collateral. <clears throat> the 14th Amendment, instituted in 1868, states that each individual as a citizen of the United States, which is a voluntary position, cannot question the public debt. How convenient each person, and person can be a corporation, will have a birth certificate printed on bond paper that will become a bond and that, and that the person will become a vessel under maritime admiralty law or the straw man in all capital letters. This will be the flesh and blood natural man woman's commercial trading company. Now the birth certificate can be borrowed against by the corporation, USA Incorporated. Whenever the flesh and blood man or woman opens a bank account, receives a bill from a corporation, a driver's license, or any license from the corporate state, it will be in the vessel's name in all capital letters. 29 CFR 783.38, statutory definition of, quote, American vessel. Section number 783.38, section name, statutory definition of American vessel. Quote, United States, as distinguished from a foreign vessel, includes, under the terms of the definition in section 3P of the Act, quote, any vessel which is documented or numbered under the laws of the United States. Would that be a birth certificate? The Department of the Treasury, Bureau of Customs, and the United States Coast Guard, respectfully, respectively, are responsible for documentation and numbering of vessels, quote. So would a birth certificate be documentation and numbering under the laws of the corporate United States? If this John Doe in all capital letters is a misnomer or the wrong name, Try and get them to give you a license or deed of trust in your upper and lower case name and see what happens. On the signature line you sign your name on on your checking account checks, look with a high-powered magnifying glass and read the line because it isn't a line at all. It is the series of words that say authorized signature only, over and over. Why would they put microprint on the signature line of a negotiable instrument, a legal document, if the words had no meaning? <laughs>